Hi, right, Phil Schoenberg, Fast Pitch Power. Uh, one of our followers asked a great question. Um, was looking at the post where I was discussing the setup to throw a curveball. Uh, he's got a 13-year-old daughter who he's just introducing the curveball to and said, Coach Phil, um, I was watching your post on the position of the stride foot landing to throw a fastball, making sure for a right-hand pitcher that the left foot is to the left of the right foot, thereby enabling with a natural arm circle for the hand and the elbow to be directly over the power line and therefore directly in the throw zone. So what do I mean by that? When I come off the pitching rubber, when I load and I come off the pitching rubber and I track, if you'll notice, my left foot, which is why they call it a left foot, is to the left of my right foot. And you'll see that my pitching hand, elbow, forearm, and hand are directly over this black line, the power line. This gives me a straight path to my target, enables me to fire and drive through. Now if I do the same thing and I cross my foot over, the natural position for my hand when I land, you'll notice, is behind my body. So in order to get to the throw zone now, I'm going to have to rotate or bend in order to get there. So that's why it's very important on the setup for the fastball, as was indicated by this follower, to make sure that your stride foot, right hand pitcher now, is to the left of your drive foot. But he was asking about the movement pitch, the curveball. When we teach a curveball, his question was, why are you teaching in a curveball to have the stride foot land in a different position than it would land for a fastball? The simple answer to that question is, it really shouldn't. The variation in the landing of the stride foot should be minimal between your fastball, your curveball, your screwball. You certainly do not want to give away what pitch you're throwing by where your stride foot goes. However, when we are dealing with young pitchers who are developing, we are exaggerating the position of the landing foot, the stride foot, so that they can not only understand, but they can feel the establishment of front side resistance. No matter what pitch I throw, and I'm gonna go sideways now, when I come off the pitching rubber to throw a fastball, boom, look at the position that I'm in. I have what's called a firm front side, front side resistance. I do not want that to break down, as though there is a wall here with nails sticking in. I can drive up to it, but I don't want to go through it. And that is the same situation for any pitch I throw. I do not want my upper body drifting forward or around as my pitching hand is going down the throw zone for any pitch I throw. So for a curveball, when I come off the pitching rubber, I want to establish a firm front side, and you'll notice now I have crossed over. You'll also notice that my pitching hand is behind my body slightly. So when I get to the back of the throw zone now, I am going to change the hand path to follow the shape of my new curveball throw zone, which is shaped like a curveball. I'm following the path of my dry foot toe to my stride foot toe, and I am creating spin on the ball, and I am allowing that spin to make that ball break late in the strike zone. So when I come off the pitching rubber for my curveball and I establish that firm front side with my destination, which is the top of my pocket, really close to my pitching hand, it enables me to get to that destination quickly. Now as a young pitcher develops and becomes stronger, and the arm, the lower arm width gets faster, and the wrist gets quicker, and the fingers get involved, the, the distance that I cross over the power line to establish that front side resistance should get less and less and less and less until it's almost exactly the same as a fastball. Same thing for a screwball. When I stride for a screwball, I'm going to be slightly open so that the path from my dry foot toe to my stride foot toe creates the shape of a screwball. But again, as I develop and I become quicker and stronger as a pitcher, 
I am going to have the variation in the landing of that stride foot become less and less and less. So the simple answer to the question is, there really should not be anything other than a minimal change to where your stride foot lands for whatever pitch it is that you throw. But for young developing pitchers, we have found, and I think you'll find as well, that if you exaggerate that at the beginning when you're introducing the pitch, they will get the feeling of front side resistance a lot quicker. I hope that this has been useful. Love to hear your comments. If you have any questions, certainly share them with us and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. Talk to you next time.